Good morning, folks. It's the one-year anniversary of something special today. Before that, we've got weather and science news, and afterwards, we've got another special catastrophism video inserted right here in the morning show. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star in the coronal holes dominating these heliographic longitudes. No sunspots or eruptive behavior, and you can really see how the northern coronal hole is indeed connected to the permanent polar opening when we switch to 211 angstroms of light. The coronal holes began their reversal trek in the months before the sunspots return. The solar wind took a few intensifications over the last day, especially visible in the purple plasma speed. But on the left, we can see the scale. The stream never departed normal quiet range, and geomagnetism is quiet too. Nine hours of KP0, so eyes open for that to potentially hit cosmic ray alert level today. Let's go out to France. Between the wind and the water, it's a brutal go after the convergence off the North Atlantic low across the country. It has turned deadly, and indeed, there is more rain potentially coming the next 48 hours. Folks, the snowstorm that crossed the Midwest broke even more records yesterday. That makes six record-breaking cold and snow events so far before winter officially arrives. And I will attest to the snowfall in the West off event number seven. We are all white powder up here. No big quakes yesterday, but I wanted to mention a surge in blood echo activity, both on the western side of the Pacific and here in the southeast. Before getting into the science, let's transition with a nice aesthetic shot of NGC 3175. This galaxy is in its middle ages, as the dust and gases from Nova events tell us she's had some experience, but the star formation rates indicate she's also got fuel left in the tank. Up first in the science articles is NASA's Dr. Tony Phillips and his Earth to Sky calculus program with high schoolers tracking cosmic rays. It is one of the great space weather student outreach programs in existence today, and our latest update this week tells us that we're showing record high marks still. We are at the modern cosmic ray maximum with both a weak sun and Earth's weakening magnetic field. Keep that concept in mind a moment as we come to Jupiter and its moon Io, which plays a titanic role in the electromagnetic near Jovian space environment. Its neutral oxygen release from its atmosphere is what gets ionized by Jupiter's radiation, creating the Taurus. And this is a great reminder that the Taurus jet model of energetic points in space is pure plasma science. To learn more about it, watch our movie called Plasma Cosmology. Now I told you to keep that weakening magnetic field in mind, the cosmic rays, the catastrophe in general. Well folks, Dr. Schaefer has had an interesting life in that realm. Decades ago, he was one of the people who first hinted that the sun could nova, and then seemed to shy away from the topic for nearly two decades. Today, he's back to decompose two critical aspects of nova science as being untenable, unsavable, and the need for new mechanisms and processes to work in the models. I might mention that's not unlike the secret our sun is hiding, but I think he's hinting at that anyway. And speaking of this whole catastrophe concept, today is the one year anniversary of the start of the 23 part series Earth Catastrophe Cycle. The first episode came out December 16th, 2018. It is now our most watched video on the channel, The Next End of the World, CIA Classified, the video that started it all. And on that note, Folks, there's something we've not discussed in this realm, and it's more of a fun FYI than anything else. Even when discussing shelter and safe zones in the past and for the next event in the future, we've never discussed the pyramids. I don't get into this topic much, but I do consider this one very strong. Hope you enjoy. In the Cosmic Disaster movie released earlier this year and the 23-part series that preceded it, we touched on survival zones of the world and in terms of past potential shelters like the tunnels of Turkey or potential modern ones like mountains, mines, or underground bases spread across the globe. A few days ago, we went over what could be the greatest bug out plan ever as Jeff Bezos has the option of going down into a mountain or launching into low earth orbit all from within the region of the world I've determined to be the top tier survival zone. But something we didn't discuss at all in the movie or that 23-part series that preceded it was the potential for the pyramids to have been a true shelter for such events long ago, whether that was the intended purpose or not. Now, obviously, the wind is not going to tear down these great structures. Pretty much a check mark there. It would even be difficult to argue against its flood safety, given that its internal chambers would have the air sealed in. And given that the region drains off hard on the larger scale due to geography, the wait would not be long for the water's recession. But of course, the critical question would be the cosmic rays. 
What happens when the ionosphere is in glow mode, when the aurora is global? Is this structure capable of blocking out the DNA breaking, cell function disrupting, brain process interfering, and radiation-induced organ-killing potential of the Great Flash itself? The answer is yes. I'm going to cycle through three images from the key study on this topic. Top line of the images are the electric fields and the bottom line are the magnetic fields created when the pyramid is subjected to increased radiation. As the pyramid endures harsher radiation, it not only creates protective fields around itself and in the surrounding zone, but it directs that energy down into the ground as well, the safest place of all to send it. And it has also been shown that there is nothing special about the exact shape or the materials of the pyramid. While other shapes will produce different shaped fields, they do notice this energy reflection and concentrations occurring within, around, and in interesting patterns amongst the locale of just about any kind of large structure. It should even work for mountains and some large modern buildings. The specific pyramid shape, however, is a lightning protector as well, and that might include blasts up to the cosmic discharges we hear about in like the stories of Thor or those by Velikovsky. Even an atmospheric loss, an ionospheric drop, would dissipate the energy received down through the wider pathways of the pyramid itself. The engineering to purposely design it like this is unlikely to have been possible, not unless they had help or advanced civilization is much older than most scientists believe, wink. But as an unintended consequence of their activity, potentially unintended, they have indeed, undeniably, created a formidable stronghold against this disaster. We greatly appreciate your support. If you haven't actually gone back to watch the 23-part series, it goes way more in-depth than our one-hour movie. Both of those are linked below. Check them out. We've got more on the topic coming, so subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.